Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at the Inwin 101C, a case that ticks a lot of boxes. Okay, so welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the Inwin 101C. Now, on the channel before, you've probably seen me do a lot of case reviews. Uh, primarily on more budget orientated cases. Now this is gonna be a bit of a step up, the planned upgrade path from my own personal rig, from my Corsair 750D, is gonna be into this uh, 101C from Inwin. Now this case ticks an awful lot of boxes for me, so let's have a quick look at it and I'll tell you more about it. So, the first thing, tempered glass side panel, definitely a tick box, especially in 2018, going into 2019. Tempered glass is the way of the future, especially if you're going to be using any form of RGB or high-end components that you want to show off. Now this case has got a lot of kind of neat tricks up its sleeve, and some of them are more obvious than others. Now the first one, which is relatively obvious, is the attic. I was going to say basement, but it's not a basement, it's an attic. Which seems a weird thing to have in a case, but still, there you go. So in the top section here, you've got an attic. Now this is where the power supply goes now. Now we've been used to, over the last probably five years or so, most power supplies have been mounted in a basement area. But Inwin have turned that upside down completely and we've gone back to the, the roots of PC building where the PSU is now firmly entrenched in the top of the case. Now for me, this makes an awful lot of sense, especially regarding airflow. Obviously heat will rise, Having an attic at the top with a 120mm fan in your power supply, taking the heat straight away from probably one of the hottest areas of your system, which is the VRM and CPU area, all that heat, rather than having to circulate or go around, is going to be pulled straight out the back of the machine and out into the room. So it's not going to harm any of your other components. For me, that is a definite tick box. Another tick box. Now, ventilation. Ventilation is a, a massively important thing with modern cases. And fortunately, Inwin have got this completely covered as well. Mounting options for three radiators. Now you've got option at the bottom for a 360 mil radiator. You've got the option on the back area for a 240 mil radiator. And in the back, you've got another option for a 120 mil radiator. So potentially three radiators in this chassis which considering its small size, which is about 18 and a half inches long by about 17 and a half high and about eight and a half wide, it's actually quite a small case to get that much flexibility for water cooling in. And it very much challenges what I've got available in my 750D, which is considerably bigger in all dimensions. So let's talk a little bit more about cooling. So at the bottom, you've got the selection for the 360 mil radiator or 320 mil fans. Now the bottom area is completely filtered with a pretty much full size filter, which is relatively easy to remove just by sliding it out. So that's gonna give you really easy access to clean this up. Um, no awkward fiddly bits at the front or back. A full length filter. It's actually quite sturdy as well. And they've specially designed the feet so that it's actually very easy to put back in and just slides into position. So like I said, you've got really good mounting area at the bottom there, so you can stick three fans in there quite easily, which is actually something I do intend to do with Inwin's Polaris fans, the RGB fans, which we'll get more into the RGB a little bit later, but there's a good reason for that. But they're basically gonna be three fans on the bottom as an intake, blowing straight up, which is gonna cool the graphics card down brilliantly, and obviously, because of convection, cold air coming in, rising up again, with the heat being pumped out the back. Sounds to be a great solution. Now the radiator section on the side, you can use either two 120 mil fans or a uh, 240 mil radiator. Now in my particular setup, I've got the Aurora Flow, one uh, Aurora Flow 240 mil radiator setup, also with RGB fans, which will all tie in nicely to the uh, ASUS Aurora Sync. So that's gonna be on there with the two fans that come with it. So that's gonna be five fans to begin with. We've still got an option for another fan on the back, which I could get another Polaris fan and daisy chain it up further, or I could just put a standard uh, fan on the back just to pull out some extra air. But it's gonna be pretty balanced. Three coming in, three going out. What more could you ask for? So let's take the front side panel off and see actually what it's like inside. Now, 
This is something that actually one of my viewers commented on when I asked previously on a previous case design. I said, I wish it had captive screws for the, tongue, uh, for the TG side panel. And I got a sarcastic reply, well, why would you want that? Well, this proves my point. These pull release tabs, whatever you want to call them, are a great idea. They're not going to get lost. They're easy to use. And also this tempered glass side panel has a very nice kind of smoke tint to it, but it's a black tint rather than being a smoke tint. So it's a really nice thing. And it's actually very narrow. So I think it's only about three or probably about three millimeters. So that's going to save a lot of weight. But anyway, let's put that down before I break it. So moving back into the interior of the chassis. So in the package, you get this lovely little package from uh, inside the package, you get this package. You know what I mean. You get this bag with all your instruction manual and spare cable ties, screws, all that kind of stuff that you're ever likely to need. Now, most people with builders are gonna probably have a, a ton of screws lying around, but it's really nice so that if this is gonna be your first time build and you're, you're trying to do it properly, then <laughs> you can't get the manuals out to see what you've got to do. So instruction manual for the RGB, which again, we'll get onto, and you get a really nice manual showing you where all the screws go, how to put it all together, etc., etc. Really nice touch. Also in here, a GPU bracket. So if you've got a slightly older sagging graphics card, and come on, let's face it, if you've got a slightly older card, then it's gonna start sagging and it needs a little bit of extra help and support. So this uh, bracket can be screwed into from the mounting points there or there, and that'll just help support your graphics card. Quite a nice little touch. So you get a selection of cable ties, really nice. And these are probably the best laid out screws I've ever seen in my entire life. Even better than what I used to be with Tamiya models. I'm showing my age there. So you get washers there, which uh, can be used. So if you're mounting a reservoir in this section here, you can use those as uh, grommets, stop any vibrations, that's really nice. You get an RGB coupler, a four pin RGB coupler. Again, we'll get onto the RGB shortly. Uh, more screws there, that's the fine screws. Not entirely sure what they're for, probably for mounting SSDs, that kind of thing. You get a set of uh, fan mounting screws and you get a set of pillars for the motherboard supports and one of those nice little uh, socket adapters for your crosshead screwdriver so you don't need a box wrench to tighten them up. Now, they, actually speaking of which, most of the pillars are actually mounted in already. So there's four pillars in there in the uh, mini ITX layout. So if you want to add in extra pillars, you can do. Now this looks like it's going to take up to E-ATX motherboards in there, relatively straightforward. Uh, without very little problem. Um, just obviously measure your board up before you do it, just to make sure you're not gonna kind of encroach on any of these cable management areas. Um, right, what should we talk about now? Okay, there's so much on this case that I just don't know where to start. So we've talked about the attic. Now, you can see under there, there is a hole for the air to go through. You've got mounting, uh, you've got an area there for, for bringing cables down through, so cable management's gonna be really easy. Further along this top area, you've got the hard drive mounting area. So you get two of these in-wind mounting brackets or caddies, whatever you want to call them. And they are flexible. Just put your drive in or you can put a two and a half inch drive in, screw it up, no problem at all. Now there's a little clasp on the side there, which I didn't notice before, which actually locks the drive into place. So when you put it back in, you have to have the arm sticking out and then the latch grabs round and fits in nicely. If you try and put it in the other way with that closed already, it just doesn't work very well at all. So mounting area for two three and a half inch drives or two two and a quarter uh, two and a half inch drives. So moving on down, this is the area where you can mount your radiator or two fans. And it's nice to see on the fan fan mounting area, there's actually like a, a lip which will direct the airflow. So rather than just escaping and getting lost around the back of the chassis, it actually uh, focuses the airflow out through the really pretty vents on the back which we'll have a look at in a bit. Um, again, cable management, there's no grommets on these, but all the uh, areas have been rounded off nicely, so that's all pretty good. And you get the inclusion of, on the front panel, actually, which comes down to where this is coming out, you get USB-C, which is a, a really nice thing to see on a, a case of this price. Now, it's not a, uh, a budget case by any means, it's a, a definitely a mid-range case, 
These can be uh, bought from anywhere around about $70 upwards, depending where you go. Um, in the UK, a little bit more expensive at the moment, but prices generally anywhere between 70 to 100 pounds. Okay, so we've talked enough about what's actually in here. You've got mountain, uh, you've got a large mountain area there to get, get to your cooler, get access for the cooler, etc. You've got these removable tabs, which are nice, so you haven't got any of that awkward, horrible plas uh, metal, which you've got to fold a few times. That's all really nice. So let's uh, spin it around and have a look at the other sides. So on the front, You've got a acrylic piece of plastic with the Inwin logo. Now this is uh, deliberately acrylic because it has RGB lighting. So if you've got a four pin RGB lighting header on your motherboard, that can be connected up to there and, and you can control the lighting of that. So again, in this build, I'm gonna be using the Asus Aurora sync and I'll have the Polaris fans and also my Aurora flow all synchronized together, which I think is gonna look absolutely amazing. Now a bit further down, power button, nice clicky power button. No reset button, which a slightly odd omission in my opinion. I don't know why you wouldn't have one, but I can see that it's not absolutely necessary because the only reason most people use a reset button for now is to change their RGB lighting. If you've got a slightly cheaper RGB kit and you need to wire up the reset button to change the colors like Cooler Master and a few others. But this has got RGB built in, so reset button, not really needed. Now further down there, there's a hard drive activity LED, which is absolutely tiny. So again, a really nice style, or a really nice change in PC design language or style. The hard drive LED, you don't really need to know it's active, but if you want to know, there is a very small LED there. All well and good. Now, as you probably noticed, the front is completely solid. There's no uh, perforations or anything to it whatsoever. And actually there isn't a join between the top panel and the front panel is all made of one complete sheet of steel, which adds to the structural rigidity and the feeling of quality. So, really nice. So let's move around to the back side now, which actually could be the front side because it looks so nice. So you've got this really nice hexagonal pattern, which is punched in. Now, I was looking at it originally when I first saw this case, and I thought, well, actually, those tiny little perforations inside of each one of those, those little Y shapes, that's not gonna let any air in at all. But when you actually look at it close, because of the way it's designed, the actual, almost all of that is open, but on different layers. It's very difficult to explain. You have to see it for yourself in real life. But basically behind each one of those um, hexagons is a completely empty space. Now, let's take this panel off so you can have a better look inside. Now again, you've got captive screws on the back side, which I do like my captive screws. It saves me losing them or them dropping out all over the place. Now this panel actually fits in in a really nice way. You've got little plastic lugs which stick out, which fit into the bottom. So if you've got a, a slightly challenging setup with your wiring in the back, you can put it in and you can kind of squeeze it closed. You don't have to worry about trying to slot a side panel on sideways whilst trying to uh, press down on all the bits of the panel so it stays in nicely. But there we go, that's the inside of the, of the, uh, the rear panel. You can see the punch out, it's just, uh, there's just so much airflow possible there. It's a really good design. And also you've got uh, rubberized strips around all the edges to remove any vibrations. It's a really nice case. So this is the uh, rear side of where the hard drives go. So easy access for uh, cabling. And this actually makes it a lot easier because you can take your SATA cable straight out the side and straight up into here and you can manage that all nicely. Now you can get up to a 200 mil power supply in the uh, attic area and it will still leave you with a pretty good area to or any extra cables you may have. Uh, if you've got a modular power supply, that's not gonna be a problem, but if you've got a non-modular power supply and you're using cable extensions, like I will be in some instances possibly, or will I? Not too sure. You can find out in, in the upcoming video when I actually do the build in this. But you've got lots of options for cable management in that top, top area. Now, I've already run these cables down through for the USB, built-in USB 3, the USB-C, the hard drive, and power LEDs. Although saying that, you probably haven't got power LED. No, you've got power switch and hard drive LED. That's sort of the only two you need. And also, there is the Y connector or splitter for the RGB for the front illumination. So you've got standard RGB connections. So it's 12 volt, then uh, GB, uh, GRB. So you've got two of those. And like I say, you've got the, uh, the coupler in there. So you can connect up to your own RGB setup. 
which is really nice. And that's actually a really nice long cable, so even if your motherboard has got like an RGB connector over on this side, uh, you should be able to get to it relatively easy by just running it around the back there. So they thought of quite a lot of things in this case. Now the only thing I would have liked to have seen actually in this particular area here is a few more options for uh, tying down these cables just to keep them nice and neat. But again, it's not the end of the world. Um, I could put a cable tie in there quite easily or a sticky pad with a cable tie on to deal with that. There are some punch outs already available for cabling. So it's, uh, it's not a deal breaker at all. Now further down, got two mounting areas for two and a half inch SSDs. Now these are the uh, removable type. So attach your drive onto there and just slot it straight back in. Which is not easy to do on this angle because I can't see what I'm doing. So there's that side. Um, I'll quickly tilt it down so you can see the top. So on the top you've got two USB 3.0 headphone and microphone which aren't actually labeled up so that could cause some confusion but most uh, modern sound cards or uh, onboard sound if you plug it in, it will ask you what you've plugged in anyway, so you can select whether it's headphone or microphone and once you've set that up, then that's fine. Uh, you've got your USB Type-C, which is a really nice thing to start seeing. And let's move around to the back. So in the back, there's a mountain area for your power supply. Now, again, one thing I would have liked to have seen in here, which they haven't put in, uh, would be some kind of rubber grommet or rubber um, pads in this top area just to prevent any vibrations from the power supply coming through to the rest of the system. But again, because this is a really nice thick steel, um, it's gonna sound dead in quite a lot of that anyway. So I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Um, you've got the mountain area there for the 120 mil fan, again, with this sort of honeycomb hexagonal design, which is really good for airflow, uh, much better than a circular pattern. You've got the mountain area there, that's for your IO shield. Now the IO shield is a little bit of an odd one. It's not got the, uh, the two horizontal bits, just the two verticals. So it gives you a little bit of uh, wiggle room to move shields so you get it lined up absolutely perfectly. Uh, and with these uh, PCI covers or PCI Express covers, there isn't actually any metal going in between. So if you've got a, uh, a dual height or triple height graphics card, then you don't have to worry about any bits of metal and that not fitting properly. So again, a nice thing to see. And um, because of the structural rigidity of this case, again, because of the quality of the steel, it's quite a thick steel. Um, there's, n there's no movement in the chassis whatsoever, so they don't need those extra reinforcements there anyway. So let's take a look at the bottom. So as I said before, you've got this full-size filter which runs front to back and fits in nicely into these feet which have got rubberized bases. So again, if there's any vibration coming through, those should even out quite nicely. And again, you've got these massive honeycomb or hexagonal design which is the kind of the in-wind thing. They do like that kind of design. So there's a massive amount of airflow possible there. So if you've got a radiator there, or even if you're just going air-cooled, you're gonna get a load of air coming in through there. My only slight concern is with fans being down there um, and how the feet are, it would have been nice to see the feet maybe be a little bit bigger, just to give it a little bit more height off of the, uh, off of the floor. As when it's upright like that, there isn't a massive amount of room there. Still, you're gonna get plenty of airflow there, but if you've got anything surrounding it, it just makes the airflow a little bit awkward, whereas if it was a little bit higher, maybe it would be better, but I don't think it's gonna be a deal breaker in any way, shape or form. But I personally, I really like this case. I'm very pleased with it. I'm looking forward to building it, something rotten, and so much so that I don't even wanna video it, I just wanna get on and do it and start using it. But I won't, I will, will make a video so you guys can see how it goes. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it. I don't think there's anything else I need to cover on this. I think that pretty much sums up most of it. But for a case with RGB lighting, with a really good cooling solution, all these lovely nice features, the tempered glass side panel, the captive screws, the nice touches like the extra cable ties and all the quality components it just it covers so many bases in my opinion i'm really fussy when it comes to cases and i'm very easily disappointed and uh, from my initial looks at this i don't think this is going to disappoint me i think this is going to be uh, pride of place as my own personal rig so anyway i've waffled on for far too long this has been the inwin 101c 
If you've got any comments or questions on it, then stick them in the comment section below. Um, also, while you're down there, click on the subscribe button, click on the chime icon, and that way when I do the build video of this, then you'll be notified and you can check it out at the same time. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I've been Mike. This is Mike's unboxing reviews and how-to, and hopefully we will see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.